All right, we're just waiting for the compressor to finish up. Almost done. All right, and you'll see, boom, everything looks like it got bigger. Actually, what it did is, you'll notice we don't have the high parts and the low parts as much as we did before, and so the volume level is more consistent all the way across. Now, what I want to encourage you against is compressing too much. If you do, you'll see that all the audio is right up to the top, and um, that actually just sounds really bad. So you have to experiment around with that a little bit and play with it and see what works best with... Um, the person that you have speaking, if they're a really dynamic speaker, you're going to compress them differently um, than somebody who speaks at more of the same volume level all the time. All right, so now that we've done compressing, um, you'll hear that all the audio is even louder still now. That is the rock. That is the foundation. That The next step we want to do is we actually want to eliminate noise that's in the background. Um, in our church, we uh, don't have air conditioning, um, so we actually use fans, and uh, that, that gets picked up by the microphones. And then also, with compressing the audio and amplifying it, any hiss that's in the sound system, that gets amplified too. So I'm going to show you how to take that out. And uh, also, like I said, if you have a fan blowing in the background or any constant noise, it has to be something that's constant. You can't like remove like a baby crying with this method. But uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to look across the audio here and find a section that there is no sound. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to zoom in to find something a little bit easier. I'm going to find the biggest section possible. Okay, so, so here near the beginning, I believe this point doesn't have any sound. So we're going to zoom in, zoom way in there. I'm going to highlight this section here where there's no sound and play it to make sure there's no sound there. All right. Okay, so now with that section highlighted, we're going to leave that highlighted, go up to Effect, go to Noise Removal, and I leave all of the settings at the default. I haven't had any problems with that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click Get Noise Profile. Okay? And got the noise profile and we're done. Now we're going to select, uh, zoom back out, and we're going to select all of the audio again. And we're going to go back up to Effect and go to Noise Removal again. Okay, the last time when we clicked Get Noise noise Profile and we highlighted that silent section, what it did is it listened to see what noise was in that section that was supposed to be quiet. So it listened for that. Now, we're not going to click that again. With everything highlighted, instead we're going to go down and we're going to click OK. And now what it's going to do is it's going to take that sound that it listened to in the quiet section and it's going to remove that sound from the entire recording. All right, now the noise removal processing's almost done here. We'll just wait for it to finish. Okay, now it's finished. Um, now we're pretty much we're done editing the sermon. If you listen, it has to be truth. It has to be the God. Everything should sound really good now. Um, we've eliminated any hiss and noise and uh, fans or anything like that. We've compressed the audio so that it's all. Um, going to sound good when you're playing it back. You're not going to be having to reach for the volume knob. And we've also uh, trimmed the start and end points. Now what we're going to do is we're going to export the work that you've done. So we go up to File, and we go to Export. And we're just going to select where to save it. So I'm going to name this Sermon and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. You wanna put this somewhere you can find it easy um, because we're going to be using that file again in just a minute. And now it's exporting the project and that'll just take a couple minutes. All right, just about done exporting. Let me look and see here on the desktop. There's the file we just exported, all edited and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
minimize audacity because we're not going to use that anymore. Um, now what we have here saved, I saved it to my desktop, is a WAV file. Now that's a very big file, not something that you can use for podcasting. So what we need to do now is to convert it to an MP3. I found the best way to do that, uh, personal preferences, are iTunes. So we're going to open up iTunes, and I'm just going to drag this file over into iTunes. There's other ways to import, but I like the drag and drop method. Um, up in the search bar in iTunes here, we're just going to type in the name of that file to find it. And you'll see it's right here. It's all imported. Um, now, before we convert, we need to make sure that the converting the MP3 conversion settings in iTunes are set up properly. The default settings in iTunes are not what you want. So we're going to go into iTunes preferences, and on in the preferences, we're going to want to click on import settings and import using um, the default in iTunes I think is AAC um, we want to select the mp3 make sure that it's compatible with all mp3 players and then under setting um, we're going to go into that drop down box and what you want to select is custom and that's going to bring up this other window here um, the stereo bit rate we want to set to 128 the sample rate is auto channels you want to set this to mono, and that's very important because a mono file takes up half as much file size as a stereo file. Um, so you want to select mono for that. And then just leave these other two boxes checked, and we're going to click OK, OK, and OK, and get out of there. All right, now back on uh, looking at your sermon file. You want to highlight it, and then in your menu you want to select Create MP3 Version. In uh, OS X on a Mac, it's under Advanced. On a Windows computer, I'm not sure where that's located under. But anyways, once we've selected that, it's going to start converting. And you'll see that there's a second one here that says Incomplete. Um, that'll be ready in just a few seconds. Okay, it's finished up. Now what we want to do is we're actually we're going to delete the big file. Make sure you delete the one uh, that size it's the, the big one, the initial wave file you imported. So we're going to right click on that and go to delete and remove. And I'm going to move it to the trash. Um, you don't want to keep those on your computer because they're so large that um, within a year of sermons you'll have so much space taken up on your computer with those files. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to name the file. So under the name I find the best thing to put here is the date. So I'm just going to delete where I'd written sermon and we're just going to have the date there and under artist put the name of your church and then under album put the name of the pastor or person that was speaking now this is going to help you a lot um, in finding your sermons and you allowing you to keep an archive of your sermons in iTunes um, and with the name for the date, I recommend putting the year first and then the month and then the day because um, as you go through multiple years of preaching, it's a lot easier to be able to sort things by year um, and then by month and by date. And it's a lot easier to find things. All right, now your sermon is all edited and compressed and converted to an MP3, and it's ready to upload to your website for podcasting. You can email it to people. Um, it's ready to do whatever you want with it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. And uh, once again, my name is Derek from Housetop Media, and you can find more tutorials and information from us at www.housetopmedia.com. Look forward to talking to you, and be sure to send me any questions you have. Have a great day. God bless.